In order to improve your writing, you must write. You will write numerous papers in English class, and your teacher will provide feedback on the writing errors you commit. In order to improve upon those weaknesses and prevent those errors from occurring, you must reflect on them. Students often look only at a final grade on a paper and ignore the detailed feedback a teacher gives. Completing the MUGS revision checklist will help you avoid this trap. This document helps you account for the errors you make on each writing assignment. After a period of time, the checklist will reveal patterns and mistakes, helping you focus on your problem areas. In addition, the document provides links to assistance in understanding and revising errors. The checklist may seem like a complicated document at first, but it will be easy to use once you start. Let's take a look at it. Look first at the issue column. In the issue column, you will see lists of MUGS errors. These are the errors that you may commit on each writing assignment. Each one is individual and requires an individual revision strategy to fix. For instance, you might find title formatting error, capitalization error, subject verb disagreement, a host of comma errors, word misusage, unnecessary voice shifts, weak word choice, passive voice mood shifts, a variety of different errors, some of which you will encounter on your papers and some of which you will not. Each cell that contains an orange triangle in the top right-hand corner bears a comment. The comment will explain what the error is in brief. For instance, for title formatting error, you will see that this error results from not using quotation marks or italics correctly when writing a title. That may be enough for you to understand and fix the error. If it is not, the checklist contains extra information that we'll discuss in a moment. To the left of the issue column, you'll see the mark column. Under the mark column, you will see a list of the revision marks that your teacher will use to identify the errors. So, for instance, if you see an SP mark, circling usually a word, that you know that's a spelling error. If you see an AGR, circling, underlining a word, or highlighting a comment, then you know you've committed one of the various types of agreement errors. VP stands for vague pronoun. The comma errors are listed by number. All of the errors are marked by a revision mark. As you read through your comments, decode the revision marks by using the MUGS checklist. To the left of the mark column, you'll see the category column. This will reveal which of the four MUGS areas the error falls into, mechanics, usage, grammar, or style. To the right of the issue column, you will see a few columns for explanation. The MUGS checklist contains links to information about the errors, helping you understand them, identify them, and revise them. For the text column, you will see a link, usually, to the Capital Community College grammar site. This site contains detailed information on each one of the errors listed. Read through it briefly or in detail and follow up with your teacher to understand what the error is. Additionally, you may see YouTube links. Those links will link you to a video usually recorded during class discussion regarding the issue. You can watch the video to help you understand how to identify and revise the issue. Some of the errors contain both text and YouTube links. Some contain one and not the other. Some contain no links at all. If no links are contained, you should do some research to identify the error and understand it, or better yet, ask your teacher during writer's workshops. You may find that you find helpful links for some of these errors and you wish to include those links in the blank cells. Feel free to do so. Customize your MUGS revision checklist as you wish. Remember that even though information has been provided for you, nothing stops you from finding new information that you might find more helpful. In the age of the internet, every student has the opportunity to do research on an individual issue and collect helpful data from a variety of sources. Feel free to collect that data and include that data in the blank cells. To the right of the explanation columns, you'll see paper columns. Each of those is blank, ready for you to enter a paper. We'll learn more about that when we start entering a paper. At the end, you will see a total column. The totals should read zero when you start the MUGS checklist, but they will reveal numbers once you begin to enter papers. Let's take a look at how to enter a paper. Imagine you've received a paper like this with a host of comments. 
each one of these highlights indicates a comment made by your teacher. You may receive a uh, paper electronically graded like this or one graded by hand. You will assess them in the same way, going error by error and accounting for them on the mugs checklist. As you look at the comments, we can see that we see some patterns. First, we'll see capitalization issues. Count the number of capitalization issues. One, two, three, four. And that's it. It looks like this student has committed four capitalization errors on this paper. In the capitalization cell, under the paper column, you can enter the number four. It's helpful to title the paper here as well. This is analytical writing number one, so I'll type AW number one to make life easy for myself. I've marked four capitalization errors in analytical writing number one. I go back to my paper to continue. I have one error that says space, and it looks as though I have included two spaces in my typing where I should have included just one. I'll go back to my mugs revision checklist and double check first that I've only committed this error once. It looks like I have. So under space, which I find here, unnecessary extra spaces, I enter a one. Going back to my writing, I see that I have committed the redundancy error once only. RED and REP are different errors. Going back to my mugs revision checklist, I find RED for redundant. And once again, I enter a one. Going back to my analytical writings, I can see that I have committed the repetitive error once, twice, three times. I'll enter a three under repetitive. Continuing, and I see that I've committed comma error number two, once, twice, three times. And I'll enter a three under C2. Continuing, I find that I have committed the slang error. Going back to my mugs revision checklist, I find slang, and I will mark a one. I'll double check to make sure that I have accounted for each error. Spacing error, check. Capitalization error, check. Redundancy error, check. Repetitive error, check. Comma error, check slang error check. I've identified and commented and logged every error. Now I go back to my mugs revision checklist and I can see that I have some errors to focus on. It seems that my capitalization error and my comma error are the most pressing of all the errors. I can focus on those first. After I've logged these errors I know that I don't need to focus on comma errors in series, vague pronouns, number numeral confusion, tense shifts, or title formatting errors. I've individualized my focus to my own errors. I'll work on capitalization by checking out the text information about capitalization or possibly looking at the YouTube video or both. This will help me revise my errors. In addition, as I look to the next paper, I can think about capitalization errors commas and compound sentences, repetitive words, phrases, or structures. This will help me proof my paper before I submit it. So not only can I understand and revise the errors that I've committed, but I can also take a look at my new paper and revise it more intelligently by taking a look at the errors that I've made with the previous paper. As you continue from paper to paper, these numbers will change. If my numbers continue to be strong in capitalization, I know that I continue to struggle with that problem. I should redouble my efforts or ask my teacher for help. Keeping this checklist from paper to paper will help you identify trends. For instance, if capitalization goes from four to two to zero to zero to zero, I know that I've probably dealt with my error in capitalization. I've improved and I no longer have that as an issue. This will help me understand how to proof papers before I submit them. Keeping the mugs checklist will help you understand your progress in writing over a period of time. It will help you understand what to do during writer's workshops, which questions to ask during class, and what research to do on writing issues.
over a period of time, if properly used, you will find those problems disappearing and you will find your writing improving. Keep the mugs checklist, do research, and ask questions.